Uh, good morning to everyone. My presentation today goes under the rather grandiose title of Call for a Chemical Renaissance, Europe at the Crossroads. Well, what I'm going to try to do is answer two fairly simple questions during the course of the next 12 minutes. That is, why is our industry at a crossroads? And the second is, why should that matter to you? So perhaps we'll take the second question first. Why should you care? Well, chemicals and petrochemicals are contained within 95% of all manufactured goods. So it's clear that these materials really are part of the fabric of our whole society. We rely on them every day and in virtually everything we do. So these are vital materials. They're essential for our current way of life, but also they are very important enablers for a successful Green Deal transition. We need these materials to make the, pro, the, the transition to a net zero and circular economy. So why is our industry at a crossroads? Well, let me give you some statistics to illustrate how the industry has changed recently. So at the start of this millennium, back in 2000, European petrochemical manufacturing accounted for 27% of global production. 20 years later, today, it's down to just about 10%. But in that same period of time, imports of these materials into Europe has increased by 80%, 80%. So we rely on these materials for our way of life, we need these materials for the transition, and yet more and more we are relying upon other regions of the world to produce them for us, and then we ship them half the way around the world to be used here. So why have we been struggling to keep up? We've heard some of the elements of that already this morning from Jan from BSF, and you'll see some common themes in my presentation. Maybe no surprise, we're active in the same industry. But one of the issues, one of the contributors, is that our assets are typically 30 to 50 years old in Europe. This is a very capital intensive industry. We build units with a long time frame, a long time span, and typically that, that lifespan of an asset is 30 to 50 years. So we're coming into a new investment cycle. Meanwhile, other regions of the world have been quite active already and have already been replacing old assets with new. So it's vital that we can invest in the renewal and regeneration of our industry. We need to avoid being locked in to yesterday's technology. But we need regulations and an environment of permitting that makes that possible. And we risk seeing that well-meaning ambition is translated into regulations that hinder rather than help that transition and that investment. I'm going to use just two examples to illustrate some of those challenges. The first also demonstrates how technology has moved on in the last three or four decades. I'm going to talk about INEOS's Project One, and I think those of you who live or around, in or around the Antwerp area may have be quite familiar with this and may even know just about as much about it as I do. But this is a four billion euro investment by INEOS into a new facility for the production of ethylene. Ethylene is perhaps the key building block, the cornerstone of the petrochemical industry, and therefore is a precursor to virtually all manufacturing uh, ecosystems. The essential role of this material is recognized also by the EU Commission. So in its Green Deal, it highlights and it, uh, it uh, defines what would constitute uh, a project that is consistent with the Green Deal for the production of this essential material. Project one will have a CO2 emission level 60% lower than that criteria set by the Commission uh, consistent with the Green Deal. 
It will have half the CO2 footprint of the next best uh, assets in Europe. And by using material produced from Project One to replace material that we currently buy on the market, INEOS and our customers will be able to reduce the carbon footprint of our ethylene derivative products by 2 million tons a year. That's a significant step. I'm not aware of any single project in Europe that can deliver that kind of benefit. And this is a benefit using current technology. It exists today. We can deliver these benefits now. And because we know we need to get to net zero, we can design that capability into the asset. We can build in the future proofing of this, this asset to maximize the use of hydrogen and or to incorporate CO2 capture as that infrastructure develops in the port of Antwerp. But despite these credentials, the approvals have not been straightforward. And if you follow the media in Flanders, I'm sure you'll have seen some of the, the, the uh, bumps in the road that we have experienced. It's a familiar slide for you, those of you here in this morning. Uh, it shows a consistency of concern from the industry. Jan, Jan showed this, this slide uh, in his presentation. But the regulation and permitting process in Europe is hugely complex. The processes are long-winded. There are inconsistencies, and the results are unpredictable. And complexity risks leading to stagnation of investment in Europe. Meanwhile, in North America, in China, in the Middle East, investment is progressing at a pace. So we need to act quickly so that companies that are ready and willing to invest in Europe, such as INEOS, such as BSF, we heard this morning, such as many of our, our counterparts in the industry, so that we can begin this transformation. Now, it's right and proper that we have robust regulations there's no disputing that, but they need to be practical and they need to be fit for purpose. If they're not, we risk investments being made elsewhere in the world and not here in Europe. My second example is to talk about recycling of waste plastic. There are effectively two methodologies to recycle waste plastic, mechanical recycling and advanced or chemical recycling. Mechanical recycling takes waste plastic, cleans it, shreds it, turns it into plastic pellets, and then you can make new plastic items from those pellets. Advanced recycling takes waste plastic, turns it into a liquid material. That material can be used as a feedstock into existing petrochemical assets to make virtually any material you can think of. Mechanical recycling is, is a fairly straightforward process, low energy, but it can only handle a limited quality of waste plastic, and it can only service a limited range of applications. Advanced recycling would completely open up the opportunities. It can take a wider range of waste plastics and can service a much broader, diverse uh, range of end applications. So the successful transition to a circular economy really relies on the deployment of both these processes. But regulators are debating whether advanced recycling is a good thing and whether they will support that, largely because of concerns relating or their concerns relating to the fact that it has a higher CO2 footprint than a mechanical re recycling process, which indeed is true. But with the advanced recycling allows you to uh, access a much wider pool of waste plastic. And also, this is a developing technology. By definition, it will develop. So the CO2 efficiency, the, the efficiency and CO2 emissions will reduce over time. That is exactly what our industry does. Yeah, believe me, it is. Um, is we take developing technologies, we improve them, we scale them up, 
and we, and we uh, uh, make them at industrial scale. So, okay. So the conclusion is coming back to our initial questions. What is the challenge here? Well, we're at a, we're at a crossroads. We have a massive transformation to undertake in our industry. It will cost billions. There is no single solution. So we need options. We need as many horses in the race as possible. We don't want to try and pick the winning horse while the horses are still in the stable. So we need a regulatory framework that recognizes the scale of that transition, the fact that we need options, and that we need to be able to invest. So those systems, those frame, regulatory frameworks, need to be fit for purpose, they need to be practical, and they need to be material and technology agnostic, exactly echoing the comment we heard this morning from BSF. Otherwise, we risk investments being made elsewhere, not in Europe, and instead of being a trailblazer in the net zero and circular economy, Europe risks becoming a laggard. So the chemical industry has been built up over the last 100 years. We need to re-engineer it and rebuild it in the next 25 years. I mean, the desire and motivation, I'm convinced it's there across the industry. But we need fewer hurdles, not more hurdles. We need carrots as well as sticks. We heard that this morning. We need to expand the number of options available to us not restrict them. Thank you very much.